Nhạc mô ta sở phía của vẹn tao, ả rẻ hạt tao, xa mà xăm bột thẻ xa. Nhạc mô ta sở phía của vẹn tao, ả rẻ hạt tao, xa mà xăm bột thẻ xa. Nhạc mô ta sở phía của vẹn tao, ả rẻ hạt tao, xa mà xăm bột thẻ xa. From the very beginnings, I would like to pay my homage to the most valuable triple gems, Buddha, Dhamma and Zanga. And also, I would like to pay my deepest respect to the most venerable Atimuni Mangsang Nyanasuaro, the president of the Cambodian Buddhist Mang Society in USA, venerable Vice President Panyapati Pao Patsupal and Potanyano. Heng Sitong, Venerable Board Director Kate Sopano Prasaran, Venerable President, Vice President, and the members of CBMS. Especially here, I would like to respect to the most distinguished guest speakers, the most venerable Mengla Chioto Seung Wu Thi and our cooperator, Venerable Satamani Sompanya, and the Venerable Soktivi, the moderator of, CBM, uh, of the Buddha, Buddha Sasana program. And good evening and good morning to all lay people around the globe. Today is um, Saturday, 23rd, 20, 20, 2021st in USA and 24th in Cambodia. Our program today is the Buddha, Buddha Sasana program will be delivered by our moderator and distinguished guest speakers on the topic and introduction to Buddhism. But because of this is the first broadcasting of our program in the year 2021, our program, our schedules will be general information about CBMS will be by our most venerable president. Informations about the committees of propagations and publications by venerable Satamani Sompanya. And then the program will hand us to the most venerable SOCTV to present the questions to our speakers in order to discuss about Buddhism that we have selected the first topic and introduction to Buddhism in general view. So now I would like to invite and give the opportunity to our most president, the Venerable Atimuni Mangsang, the president of Cambodian Buddhist Mang Society to present the general information of the Cambodian Buddhist Man Society, please. Good evening. My name is uh, Atimani Mangsang, Edward of Ward Munistara, Minnesota, USA, and president of Cambodian Buddhist Man Society. May I first uh, pay who made to the triple gem the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. May my high respect be with our venerated Buddhist monks, uh, speaker, moderators. My, I salute with high appreciation our devoted, uh, devoted Buddhists who constantly support our organization and Buddhist program. 
once again, it is my privilege to come up here at this occasion to preside over the session of the, of the Buddhist educational program set forth by the Cambodian Buddhist Monk Society in the USA. As always, I am so grateful to all venerable monks for their perseverance to make the Cambodian Buddhist Society and always, yeah. So I am so grateful our venerable monks for their perseverance to make our aim of our mission a success and beneficial for the Buddhist communities and for human beings. No doubt, the, ed the education of Buddhism is broadly needed in the face of the actual world issues, such as the falling of moral responsibility and the lack of mindfulness. One should remember that before educating people with subject of Buddhism, first begin by acknowledging the challenging task that lay ahead, expecting the comfortability of this matter would yield nothing but failure. Please allow me to remind you about a short note of one second the time. We all agree that while a handful of our Cambodian Buddhist community experience the growth, or that do not we all agree on the need to raise moral responsibility to equate and facilitate the growth across the board. Uh, while we have seen some success, a lot more is still at the center of our concern. We need to be mindful about educational approach because uh, without uh, uh, it, the lack of discerning the subject of the growth will arise and our success cannot be well. By this, I focus on pursuing on Dhamma education. Uh, nevertheless, our venerable monks, a member of the Cambodian Buddhist Monk Society in USA, have proven that they are well aware of such difficulty and have overcome it tirelessly. We have a toolbox with plenty of tools, uh, many of members are themselves highly educated. Their enthusiasm and motivation are indeed the appreciative resource. From the outset of the establishment of our CBMS USA, uh, we set aim at propagative Buddhism to all community to simple reason, promulgating the seven the uh, discernment of right view toward Dhamma for the sake of peaceful existence, existence for each individual and for the whole society. We have come to long away and we have noted to remarkable development. Initially, we plan to organize big annual in-person gathering to serve the purpose of the Buddhist educational program. Beside our a periodical online Buddha Sasana program. But on the wake of COVID 19 coronavirus, the plan has been suspended indefinitely, thanks to the technological aid of our Hmong members. We are continuing our program through with your meeting without interruption. I could not be more grateful to our venerable monks here who hold on impressive academic and high technologies. Our venerable monks, uh, devoted Buddhist followers, your commitment to support the CBM and USA and your faith in this educational program yeah, are so beneficial, not only the Cambodian compatriot, but also to all mankind. May this fruitful merit 
lead you to longevity, good health, and perfect bliss. I am happy to officially announce the opening of the floor for the Vamma discussion, which is the content of our Buddha Sasana program. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much, the most venerable attorney, the presidents of Cambodian Buddhist Monk Society, who um, have delivered the in, uh, an introduction about CBMS and the openings of our program uh, today. So the next for the information and the schedule for our broadcasting, the for uh, yeah for daily daily broadcasting or weekly broadcasting will be. Uh, spoken by the most venerable Satamani Sumpanya. Please take your time. Thank you. First of all, I would like to pay homage to the most valuable Tripotyam, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha as a review for well being. I would like to pay my deepest respect to the most venerable Atimune Mang Sang, a president of the Cambodian Buddhist Mang Society in USA, venerable Panya Pao Pat Supal, and venerable Putinya Nauheng Sitong, vice president of CBMS, venerable Kate Sao Pano Pride Saran, board director, venerable Mahasangha, as a president committee and member of various committee and branches of the Cambodian Buddhist Monk Society in USA, especially the most distinguished guest speaker, Samdai Dara Yuwong, Dr. Kis Ratna, a vice president of the Sehanuria Buddhist University, and maybe he will be here soon. Uh, and uh, a board of Mangolawan Monastery is located in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Venerable Mangolajut Tao Sungutti at Canberra. Sanchos, California, and also my rivers to both moderator, Venerable Munipotao, Soksutiwi, and Venerable Thomas Ray Saim Chanti, the General Security of CBMA in USA. On behalf of the Committee for Propagation and Publication, and my president, Venerable I am Biko Satamani Sumpanya would like to present the weekly broadcasting program of CBMS for distinguished singers and audience before starting our live conversation on with an introduction to Buddhism. According to CBMS section 5.7 role and duty of committee CBMS content for committee such as committee for inspection and evaluation the committee for planning the committee for propagation and publication and for public relation among the committee, the propagation and publication committee is the com communication M of CBMS. Its duty including the production of brochure and flyer to propagate the purpose, goal, and objective of CBMS. Publishing book on the Dharma discipline and other Dharma Dharma subject, digitizing Tesna Dharma talk and disseminating them on social network, 
and add religious function and propagating the principle of CBMS to monks, lay Cambodian and national and international organization and community. With its duty, the committee of propagation and publication, as well as the board of director have scheduled weekly broadcasting program as below. One, Monday at 9 to 10.30 a.m. weekly guest and meet with Cambodian student month. Two, Tuesday at 7 to 8.30 a.m study three pedaka. Four, Wednesday at 7 to 8.30, monastery and meet with the senior monk. Five, Thursday at 5 to 6.30, samadhi and vipassana inside meditation. Six, Friday at 8 to 9.30, Poem and smoke my seven Saturday at seven to eight Buddhasasana English program eight Sunday at six to seven thirty Buddhist social dimension. As mentioned above, I am pleased to express my sincere thank you, Venerable Sokshitiwi, the moderator of Buddhasasana program today as well as all moderator and volunteer, especially our CBMS president, Prahati Mani Mangsang and committee who sacrifice body and mind day and night for the prosperity of our CBMS. Finally, I wish many people notationally and internationally will benefit from this Buddhasasana program now and in the future. May all living beings be happy and free from the suffering. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, the most venerable uh, Satamani Sumpanya, who presented about the weekly um, broadcasting program of our uh, CBMS. That we noticed that we have um, eight programs weekly, starting from Mondays to Sunday. And especially, this is Saturday, the program will be delivered in English. And the program name is Buddha Sasana. Buddha Sasana, it is about the whole thing related to Buddhism, Buddhist culture or Buddhism in various uh, various locations, like in Cambodia, Thai, Laos, Vietnam, Sri Lanka, Burma, or USA. So according to the weekly program, that mentioned by the most venerable Sumpanya. So now the time for English speaking program. We have actually um, two in, uh, two speakers. Uh, first, some like Premha Rayvong, uh, Dr. Kiswan Ratana. Uh, he will join maybe um, maybe later. And the most venerable Mengla Choto. Uh, Sung Wuti, who are presented here, will be um, answered the question that Venerable Sok TV as the moderator will um, give the question related to Buddhism. So I just recall to our last year program, we also um, had English program Buddha Sasana program in 2020, that moderator was Venerable Kai Supir and the most venerable Dr. Uh, Yon Sing Yet delivered the program. But for recently, the program 
hand that to Venerable Sok TV and we start the new, uh, we start for this new year. That's why today is the first, first topic that we will discuss about uh, Buddhism in general view. So Venerable Sok TV, so now you have like uh, 45 minutes now uh, to present the question, to handle the question to our speaker. Um, but speakers here only one, if you like, um, maybe I can uh, uh, cooperate some, uh, some answer or question uh, with you. So please take your time and um, deliver the question. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Venerable Sam Yom uh, First of all, I would like to pay my homage to the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. And also I would like to pay respect to uh, Venerable Maha Sangha around the world and greeting our friends in Dharma. Uh, I am Pico Mani Potao Sok TV, uh, live from Seattle, w, uh, Washington State, a moderator today. And uh, welcome to Buddha Sasana program in uh, medium English. Before we begin our discussion, I would like to inform that uh, this program brings to you by the Cambodian Buddhist Monk Society in USA presided over by the most memorable uh, Atik Muni Mansang, the abbot of Wat Muni Sataram in the state of Minnesota. This program purposefully aims at uh, propagating the Buddha's teaching to those who do not understand Khmer language and also to disseminate Buddhism locally and internationally to promote peaceful and mindful living through the Buddha's teaching to build social harmony among people of all faiths to uphold and propagate Buddhism along with Khmer culture among Khmer Americans, especially the youth. As today is the very first version of our Dhamma talk in English for the year 2021, we are very honored to uh, present to you a very interesting topic entitled An Introduction to Buddhism. So the reason why we decided to start off with this uh, topic is because Buddhism is a religion that is uh, being practiced worldwide. Uh, it is uh, believed that as many as over 535 million people around the world practice uh, Buddhism, which would represent between 8% and 10% of the world's total population. Therefore, I truly believe that it will be very helpful to bring this topic into discussion so we can learn more about Buddhism and its practices relevant to the modern lifestyle. With that being said, we may wonder uh, what Buddhism really is. Is Buddhism truly a religion, a philosophy, or a way of life, and so on? Why Buddhism? Uh, what is the story behind it? And what has the Buddha taught? And where does Buddhism lead, lead us to? All this speculation will be enlightened by our uh, uh, Dharma speakers today. And again, it is uh, such a great privilege to invite to have invited um, two Dhamma speakers to join with us today, uh, but we have not uh, uh, seen uh, most memorable, uh, some like Dr. Kizwanathana as yet, maybe uh, some uh, problem with the technical issue. So anyway, uh, I just would like to introduce our speaker here today. Uh, first, we have uh, Venerable Mangala Joto Seungwati, who currently resides at Wat Camera Ram, San Jose, California, and Venerable graduated master degree in Buddhist philosophy from the International Theravada Buddhist Missionary University, Myanmar. And he also used to be a lecturer at uh, Prasiyanu Raja Buddhist University in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. And so uh, Venerable uh, Sam Yudjanti is also here. So he will be uh, helping us in answering the question. Uh, so Venerable is also a graduated um, scholar from uh, Sri Lanka in master degree. So it's a great pleasure for us to have uh, both Venerable uh, will be answering the question that uh, I will raise in a moment. So without further ado, uh, let me start off with the very first question to uh, most memorable Seung Um So the question is somewhat around introduction to Buddhism in general with you. We want audience to really understand what uh, really Buddhism, what Buddhism really is 
and how do you define uh, the term Buddhism uh, to your understanding? Is Buddhism a philosophy, a religion, or what do you call a Buddhism? Or how uh, how do you define the, the term Buddhism? Please, Pante. I cannot hear you, Pante, sorry. Pante, please unmute yourself. Yeah. Unmute to make this. Okay, do you hear me right now? Yeah. yeah. Um, first of all, I would like to pay homage to the Triple Gems. That is a Buddha, the teaching of the Buddha and the Buddhist man. And also would like to pay my respect to Venerable Mahathera Nutera, who worked for CBMS in America who have to promote and propagate Buddhism, both in Khmer language and in English. And also would like to say thank you to all listener or audience who like to follow up our programs as well. And just now we also have a discussion and venerable so TV also raised some question to me. I think that is also a good question. A good question. There should be good answer, right? And first we would like to know the introduction to Buddhism. Buddhism has very large meaning actually. Buddhism is really different from other religions for many aspects. Like uh, if we talk about other religions, it's binding to God, you know, it's like nothing but say religion and it's message, message of God. Already define your life. The belief in religion is like a dogma. You cannot ask to clarify something that is right or wrong when you have doubt. There is uh, something that taught in other religions. So you mean that other religion, they taught us. And as you are taught or told, you have to obey the idea of the teachers like that. Buddhism is not included as such kind of religion. Buddhism is actually a way of life for people to practice, to gain their purpose of life. So in Buddhism, we are taught. And when we are taught, we have to learn to realize the truth, to get the truth, then and you also can ask to clarify your opinion or doubt, but you have something to, to ask or to know like that. It's not a kind of dogma like in other religions, right? And the word Buddhism, is a something for the enlightened person, you know? We call in our like my Buddha Sasana. But Buddha means the one who got enlightenment. Sasana means advice or information. And if we say briefly, Buddhism means the advice of the Buddha. So after he got enlightenment, he delivered many discourses and all are grouped in the three Pitaka, Pitaka that is a discipline, the discourses, and the profound, profound teaching that is called Apitama, like that. All are advice of the Buddha, and it is written in the three Pitaka. And what he was taught and what they have written to keep his word in the Tripitaka book 
we can learn, study, and practice, and whatever we have doubt, we can ask. We have freedom to ask, not like in other religions. So if you study and you don't know the truth, you have doubt, you can ask. We can say that Buddhism is a religion of freedom, justice, because it gives value to human beings. It's a religion or something that origins on earth, not from heaven. Buddhism is centered on human center, not God center. So whatever the Buddha taught, it's very valuable for our lives in this world. Not just only for Buddhists, but all non-Buddhi as well. Yes. First, I would like to give very brief introduction, introduction, and I also would like to give the opportunity to Venerable San Chanti to add something if you have more idea. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Pontes. Uh, that's very interesting where you raised the point that uh, Buddhism does not concern something which is called dogma or blind belief. You know, in Buddhism, we're not taught to believe, but we are taught to think and investigate whatever we are not sure, we are not clear. We have to ask, we have to inquire more, learn more and investigate more and practice more so that we can really understand the essence of the Buddha's teaching. And so you have raised a lot of points uh, where you compare that it's, it is not a God center. It is um, within our reach as a human being because Buddhism praise the value of the effort of our uh, you know, human nature, we have the ability to in attain enlightenment, not uh, because of we worship any other God or any other external force. So, Venerable Sanjanti, do you have any word to add to that? Uh, what do you think Buddhism really is? Uh, Thank you very much, Venerable Soktiwi. As mentioned by Venerable Mangla Chutao um, one may understand about the Buddhism really in the general. But to know clear about the word Buddhism, I just add a short, literally, Buddhism come from two words, Buddhism, and ism, but or Buddha, it means the enlightened, enlightened one or exalted one or waker, one who wake from, from sleep, one who discount from the darkness, darkness of ignorance, it is called Buddha. And ism is like Venerable mentioned before as teaching or advice or declaration. So Buddhism combined together means the teaching of the Buddha. And the teaching of the Buddha that the Pali word said, Buddha Sasana, the teaching of the Buddha. So we have to, to know who the Buddha is. And I said that the Buddha is the enlightened one or one who awake or one who uh, discovered or one who opened from the very um, dark to the light. And Buddha was either ordinary people, ordinary men or supernatural beings. If we if we look at to the discourses of the Buddha in various sutra in Majjhima Nikaya or in Samyutta Nikaya, the word Buddha that the Buddha mentioned by himself, there are three points that the Buddha mentioned himself as the Buddha. Because Brahmin, I think you know the word Brahmin. The Brahmin is the Hindu teacher or Hindus advisor or Hindus uh, uh, 
deliver the, the teaching of Hinduism. So Brahmin approached the Buddha and asked the Buddha whether you are God or you are a living being or you are something else. But the Buddha said, no, I'm not a God. I'm not a supernatural beings. So you are or ordinary people, ordinary men. The Buddha said, no, I'm not an ordinary, but I am a Buddha. The Buddha said by himself, yang apinyatang, the Buddha said, it means I realize what should be realized in the world. Bhavita Panja Pavitam, that, that means I have cultivated, I have trained what should be trained. I have abandoned, I have destroyed, I have get rid of all what should be get rid of, the all defilement. That's my Buddhomi Brahmana. Because of that, meaning, oh Brahmana, I am a Buddha. So, Buddha, that in such that uh, in such that case, he realized the universal law. He trained every every skill, and he abandoned all defilement and back action. This is Buddha, and his teaching combined together become one word: Buddhism. It means Buddha Zazana or Buddhism means the teaching of those who realize cultivate, train, and abandon all the bad things. Thank you very much. And thank you so much, uh, Pante uh, Samjanti, for uh, giving a very great detail. I think it's very uh, helpful for all of us uh, who really seek to understand the real meaning of Buddhism as Venerable has presenting that uh, uh, Buddhism <clears throat> comes from the word Bud, which means the awakened one, uh, you know, somewhat refers to the advice of the awakened one. Uh, so uh, you also talk about that uh, Buddha was not a god, was not any super, supernatural being, but he was an enlightened one, the awakened one who awakes from uh, the darkness of ignorance and who have got the light of enlightenment. So based on this, I believe that our audience uh, got more insight and have a clear understanding of what Buddhism uh, really is because uh, Buddhism is not uh, based on any other external force or uh, any other supernatural power, but all center on uh, human effort for their own liberation. And some people may say that uh, Buddhism is a philosophy, uh, is a religion or way of life. But just to uh, clarify on this point, uh, that if we refer to Buddhism as a, a system practice which uh, binds to God or worship any external power, then Buddhism is not a religion in that sense. But if we talk about the, the teaching of the Buddha uh, that guides us to liberation, and that is very much uh, the meaning, the true meaning of the word uh, Buddhism itself. But I just would like to uh, ask another question in relation to what uh, both of you have uh, uh, delivered that um, Buddhism is about the teachings of the Buddha. So what is the main teaching of Buddhism? Can you give an overview of the core principle uh, that is given in uh, his teaching? Please, Venerable Singwati. Okay, thank you for your question to me, actually, whatever the Buddha taught, he taught very in detail, but we cannot, we cannot talk, uh, talk all what he, he preached, right? And the main purpose of Buddhism, or we call it the action of Buddhism, is just to relieve suffering and to gain happiness. In order to 
of tense like kind of thing, we need to follow three kind of principle, or we can say three advice of the Buddha. The Buddha said, not to do all evil things. Kusalasopasambata means to cultivate or to do what is good. And the last one, to purify your mind, means that This kind of three advice are very essential for Buddhism. So if any foreigner asks you, what religion do you believe? You can say, oh, I am Buddhist. I believe in Buddhism. And if they ask you, what is the Buddha taught? You should just answer this short question with the three advice that the Buddha expounded. Not to do evil, to do what is good, and to purify your mind. The Buddha said not to do all evil, mean the evil that is big or small. So we need to avoid all. And to do what is good. You know, the word good, it's easy to say, but not easy to practice or not easy to do, you know. <laughs> Some Western philosophers say that the person who do good is a little bit stupid. They say like that. <laughs> but in Buddhism, to do good is very valuable, be very meaningful. As I said earlier in the program, I said that some people, they don't know what is good, what is bad, what is suffering, what is happiness. They just know it, but not super, uh, not deeply, just superficial, you mean like that. But I am interested in Rahula Sutta. You know, the Buddha gave his advice to Rahula, his son. He said that, oh, my son, whatever action that you do, and it brings happiness to you, but it brings suffering to others. You should not do it. And whatever action that you do, it bring happiness to others and bring uh, suffering to you. You also should not do it. And it is not good action. And whatever action that you do, it bring happiness to both of you, to you and to the uh, other person, then you should, do, you should do it because there is a good action. So the good action must be good for both, I mean both the doer and the other person who received the action that we, we do. Yeah, so we need to know that. And the last one in his uh, advice, the Buddha said, Satchata Prayata Panang, it means to purify uh, your minds. Um, Usually our mind is very pure at the beginning when we are born at the young, uh, as a young child. But when we grow up, our minds have defilements, so as greed, hatred, delusions, covetousness, and we, and so on. So our minds start to be polluted. It's not pure as before. So the Buddha said that need to purify your mind. And what is the tool which is used to purify our minds? In Buddhism, we have two kinds of uh, concentration. We call uh, tranquility meditation and insight meditation. Or if we say in the simple word, we call vipassana. Yeah, that is a good one to to use it to purify our mind, we need to study the teaching of the Buddha. At least we should know the three kinds of characteristics that is um, impermanent, suffering, and non-self. And also we should know 
the fire crickets and the four double trues and the 12 independent origination or 12 dependent origination. When we have that kind of knowledge, we can go to practice meditation yeah, because it's enough for us to understand what the Buddha taught. You know, some people they ask, before I go to practice meditation, what term should I know? Yeah. Some teachers just gave the answer that you just know the three characteristics, the four noble truths, and 12 independent origination, the fire cricket, then you can go to practice meditation. No need to know so much. Yeah, you can do that, it doesn't matter. And it would be so amazing, the best thing is to purify our minds. If we just study, we understand, and we don't practice it, we cannot make our mind pure. We cannot get any action from Buddhism. So the final goal in our studying and practicing Buddhism is to, to free our minds from suffering or from defilements. In Buddhism, say that you can only have true freedom or salvation only when your mind is free from defilements, you know. As long as your minds are still overwhelmed by defilements, you will never get through freedom or through salvation. So you also cannot liberate yourself from suffering. So the best way we should try to make our minds free from defilements first. And when we don't have defilement in our minds, we will not have suffering. We will enjoy happiness and peace. And yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Conte, uh, for giving very insightful uh, detail about uh, the an overview of the, the teachings of the Buddha here, uh, what you have uh, talked so far that uh, Buddha's teaching uh, includes you know, the idea of uh, liberation from uh, suffering uh, through practicing the teaching of uh, the Buddha, like uh, those of uh, the three common characteristic of you know, Samanya Lakana Dhamma, uh, the Four Noble Truths, uh, Aris, the, no, uh, the Four Noble Truths, Ariya Sajja, um, Padija Samupa, the Dependent Origination, and then um, the Five Aggregates, uh, Panjakanda, and uh, you know, the three summary of the Buddha's teaching that is to not to do any bad, to do only good and to cleanse one's mind. So this is the teaching of, of all the Buddha. Uh, that is very interesting uh, for all of us to observe and learn more into detail. What Venerable was uh, delivering is just the briefing uh, idea of the essence of the Buddha's teaching, uh, just the uh, main topic that uh, all, of the, all of us should investigate more, uh, learn more in order to understand uh, what is the three common characteristics and, and how to practice that and what the benefit of practicing that, especially the four noble truths, uh, which uh, uh, falls into later the, the, the number four contains the noble eightfold path, the way leading to the liberation. And that is very interesting. And and that is uh, the popularity uh, known to Buddhism uh, from uh, you know, the world that they all approach Buddhism based on the teachings of the Noble Eightfold Path. Uh, in short, the Sila, Samadhi, and Panya, you know, practice by practicing uh, morality and ethical code of conduct, by uh, practicing developing meditation and to uh, enhance our wisdom, Panya, and that is, uh, a short summary of the teachings of Buddhism. But now, Venerable Samyati, do you have uh, anything else to add on to that question, please? 
Thank you very much again. <laughs> um, I agree with the uh, uh, two venerable that mentions about the common sense of uh, Buddhist teaching, like the uh, like the three common teaching uh, that mentioned, and all the factors of enlightenment that you have delivered, like uh, four noble truths or the eight noble parts or three characteristics of Buddhism or mm -hmm. dependent origination. And especially when we say about the essence of Buddha teaching, we never forget about the 37, uh, 37 keys of uh, enlightened factor that we call Bodhipakya Dhamma. That, that, is, that is the very essence of Buddhism if we say in whole. But if we look at some various points, like Buddha at his last voyage, he said, Apamato uh, Amatang Badang. It is also, carelessness is also the main sense of Buddhist teaching also, if we say in one. And also in Satipatthana Sutra, the Buddha's mentioned Eka Yunoyam Pikwe Makku. The only one way that all the Buddhist practitioner should enlighten, should get rid of all suffering, is only one. What are they? What is the the Satipatthana? So this is also the essence of the of Buddhism, and we can say in other in other way in other form because it is general general use of the question, and we can we can say in many things. But I think you all comment to the Makapuja related to the Makapuja that's coming in uh, in the Thursday yeah, coming Thursday. We related also to the essence of the Buddha's teaching, like the Venerable Asiji, one among five ascetic, Panjavaki, have answered the question that asking by um, Upatissa Sariputta, the marshal of the Dhamma. Upatissa asked Asiji, what your teacher teach or what your teacher usually preach. And Asajitera delivered a short stanza, Je Dhamma Hetopapawa. Je Dhamma Hetopapawa. So, Je Dhamma Hetopawa Te Sang Hetom The Thakata or the Buddha or my teacher or teach what related to the cause and effect. So which is delivered from which? So the Buddha said the cause of that thing, that origination, that the compounding. And this is the teaching of the Buddha's cause and effect is very important. And cause and effect, as mentioned by Venerable Zimbuti, it is the 12 dependent origination. That's why in Abhidhamma Karika of Venerable Nagarajuna, he said about uh, his teaching, he said that our Lord Buddha said or teach about 12 dependent origination or Pradija Samuprad, but I am in the same way I mentioned about Sunyata Vada. Sunyata Vada means Matsyamika philosophy discuss about the cause and effect. Nothing they independently. So they have to relate it to each other. So when we understand the cause and effect, it is the Buddha's teaching that we want to, to share we want to, uh, we, we, we have to understand because everything happened because of something else. It cannot happen without any cause. Cause and effect that I want to mention is the essence of Buddhism. Thank you very much.
thank you, Pante Chanti. Uh, that was very wonderful and well put the way you presented and added on uh, concerning with the main essence of the teachings of the Buddha. Uh, in which you included the 37 uh, Bodhipakya Dharma or the 37 factors of enlightenment. I think for audience who are listening right now, you may need to write down just the main idea of, uh, you know, just the main title of the Buddha's teaching so that you can uh, research more on that. Because that is very, you know, great um, strategy or great way in order to gain liberation from suffering we all want to be free from suffering we all want to gain happiness why not we uh, try to understand the, what the buddha's teaching uh, based on the strategy he provided here the 30, 37 ways of uh, awakening or enlightenment and then you also mentioned about um, the last word of the buddha that is um, hitlessness is the way to deathlessness or mindfulness is the way to uh, deathlessness, amata dharma. And also you are uh, rest about the four satipatthana, the four establishments of uh, mindfulness uh, based on uh, body, feeling, uh, dharma, and the mind, which we have to contemplate uh, on a daily basis. That is very much uh, uh, focused or emphasizes by the Buddha that he said, this is the only way for the purification of all beings. This is the only way to get rid of uh, sorrow and lamentation and to attain the true liberation, uh, which is uh, the, the state of unbinding Nirvana. And another very interesting point that uh, most of Buddhists uh, believe in, especially our Cambodian community, uh, as we have the saying that we all believe in karma, if we do bad, we, we receive bad, if we do good, we receive good, this is the law of nature, this is the law of universe that governs the, um, the whole universe, so karma and its result is also very important to take into consideration what the Buddha taught and which has been mentioned in the first noble truth, uh, in the four noble truths as well, to uh, to have the right understanding is to believe in the cause and effect, uh, the law of karma. So that is pretty much uh, a, a crucial point uh, of the main teaching of the Buddha. When we truly believe, uh, you know, the cause of our action uh, through what we do, it will be uh, resulted in, in, in that for us, you know, like we are what we were and we will be what we are in the future. Uh, so. Uh, this has uh, shaped our way or paved the way for us to uh, try to avoid from doing bad and try, um, you know, keep us straight on the good way that we try to develop more wholesome actions, uh, meritorious deeds, and also try to purify our mind. Uh, I think that is uh, pretty much the main idea of the Buddha's teaching that we Buddhists should uh, dive deep into, you know, investigate more, learn more, so that we can practice on the correct uh, path. But um, I also would like to bring another question, uh, given the time constraint, I would like to ask the last question for uh, both speakers. So Venerable Singh with the, um, uh, when we practice through the Buddha's teaching, you know, along what all of you have raised, a lot of points that are the core principle teaching in Buddhism. Uh, what can it bring? You know, what's the result of uh, practicing through the teaching of the Buddha? Uh, can you uh, distinguish any differences, uh, you know, by practicing the teaching of the Buddha? Where can it lead to? What is the ultimate goal of Buddhism, which is uh, very unique, uh, which is distinguished from any other religions? Yeah. Um, actually, Buddhism is different or distinguished from the religion because of the vulnerable truths and a vulnerable past. In the other religion, uh, they don't have that kind of vulnerable truths and a vulnerable past. If they have just a not complete, you know, just some point in that uh, timeline. And you also mentioned when we practice Buddhism, and how should we, we, we get from our practice or to get the final goal in our practice like that? Um, when more Sam Jati also mentioned earlier, he talked about 
the septic mindfulness that is also one asset in Buddhism. And you also mentioned just now, headlessness is the way to death, right? And deadlessness, yeah. Yeah, yeah, deadlessness. And mindfulness is the way to Nibbana. It's different uh, direction. If you have headlessness, it will lead to death. For example, even though we are alive, but we lack mindfulness, we are not careful. We don't care about anything. We don't do anything. Even though we have hand, we have like, but we don't do anything. It's like ripple, you know, disciple person. You cannot do anything. So it means you like already that person because you are hatefulness person. And in Buddhism, the Buddha said, mindfulness is the way to Nibbana. When you practice mindfulness, it is only one way to liberate yourself from suffering and finally attain Nibbana. It's really, I think so. You can see in the teaching of the Buddha, even Eight Vulnerable Paths also have mindfulness there, Sati. When any person lack of mindfulness, at, at that time he's like crazy person, you know, <laughs> and he can talk uh, in wandering speak, not knowing right or wrong like that. It's like crazy person. And anyone who like mindfulness while they are doing something or driving the car like that, they also meet danger because they are not careful, they are not mindful in the action. But mindfulness here is referred to right mindfulness. I mean, samasati. In the practice of insight meditation, when we have mindfulness, like uh, right mindfulness here, we practice meditation, we focus our minds on only one object. Like in Buddhism, the Buddha prefers mindfulness of breathing in anapanasati. He taught the way to disciple. If you want to liberate yourself from suffering to attain Ipana, you should practice this meditation in mindfulness of breathing. And we can practice by just sitting and focus our mind on uh, the in breaths and out breaths who can through our nostril or touch on our upper lip here. We just try to focus our mind and note on this in breath and out breaths for about 50 minutes or 30 minutes, then our mind will be peaceful, you will enjoy happiness. Because when we practice meditation, we stop to think about everything, but just focus our minds on one object of meditation that is the in-breath and out-breath. If we cannot concentrate our mind on the one object of meditation, our mind will be wandering here and there. If our mind still wandering, we cannot know the real peace, real happiness. Suffering still inflicts our minds. But if you know how to use your mind, focus your mind just on the subject of meditation and don't let your mind wander here and there, then you can enjoy peace at the same time. No need to wait for any uh, things in the future. You can enjoy peace and happiness right now, just the present moment, you know? <laughs> and why the Buddha said mindfulness is the way to the final goal of Buddhism that is Samamodam or we call Nibbana. 
Yeah. Nibbana is some emblem or final goal of Buddhism. Nibbana is free from all kinds of suffering. So if you want to get rid of all kinds of suffering, you need to practice mindfulness until you attain Nibbana. <laughs> it's not easy to practice, but it's easy to say, you know, this point. Mother Buddha said that if you just use mindfulness, every moment, don't like any second or one minute, don't let your or you yourself like of don't make yourself like of mindfulness even a second, a minute, or hour, and so on. You need to have mindfulness all the time. When you have mindfulness on your meditation subject, at the time, greed, hatred, and um, delusions, covetousness, envies, and also ill will, thought will not arise in your mind, you know? And when these departments have no chance to arise in your minds, your mind will be free full, your mind will be pure. And when your mind is pure, peaceful, you can enjoy real happiness. It like at the same time, your mind have no defilement like as good hatred and evil thought and so on. So when your mind don't have such kind of defilements, it's like you see Nibbana in the right way because you can enjoy peace a little bit while you are practicing it, right? But if you practice further in detail a long time, until you destroy all kinds of defilements and uproot it, all at the time you are said you attain Nibbana, you know, because you can totally uproot greed, hatred, and delusion, especially this kind of defilements are very strong. No one can get rid of it easily. Only the Buddha or a hundred person who practice until attains the highest state of Dhamma, that he can get rid of this kind of three defilements. And he attained the Buddhahood or become a hundred person. Arhanta means the one who destroy all defilements. Yeah. And the Buddha, the enlightenment, enlightened one person or the awakened one person, he awake from the darkness of the ignorance that is referred to these three defilements. He get rid of these three defilements. Then he, he got the knowledge. He, he got inside knowledge, then when he got inside knowledge, he become enlightened person. His eye become very bright. He can see both near and far direction, both in the past and the future as well. So it's really good, you know. And when the Buddha also get rid of all kinds of defilements and factor in his life, he attained Nibbana. First, he attained Kalisa Nibbana means the extinction of defilements, mental defilements like that. He attained Kalisa Nibbana. So he really enjoyed peace in, in his life. Even though he is alive, he had happiness. Especially he had no mental suffering like us. For us, we are ordinary person. We don't attain the highest stake of the Tama or get rid of defilement yet. We have both mental and physical suffering. But for the Buddha, he has physical suffering yeah, sometimes. But he did not have mental suffering like us because his mind is pure, no defilements. That's why he always enjoy peace and happiness, not suffer like us. 
it's a good thing to do, to practice and to follow his footstep, you know. I mean, if you can practice until you attain Elisa Nibbana, that is also very good for your life as a Buddhist. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Pante. That is pretty much uh, detail what you have uh, mentioned so far. So I uh, don't want to uh, repeat it again. I just would like to move on to Venerable uh, uh, Sam Genti if he has anything to say uh, on to that concerning with the ultimate goal uh, of Buddhism. So Venerable Genti, um, you know, is ultimate goal of Buddhism can be achieved uh, in this present life or can it be achieved only up the life after only after we die because uh, if we look at the statement uh, that says uh, the the goal of all religions in the world uh, that is to you know leading people to peace and happiness so do you see any differences uh, you know between the goal of buddhism or the peace and happiness in buddhism which is uh, different from other religions concerning with this um, uh, question so far thank you very much again um, it is very common for the religious practitioner, not only Buddhist, Buddhist people, but also the religious follower around the world. They actually believe that after that, they will, uh, they, they will go to live with their God or their guru, their teacher or the Buddha. And in, in Buddhism also, you know, when, when we say, especially the Dhamma talkers say that if you do a good deed, you practice, follow the Buddha footprint, you will go to see the Buddha that he waiting us at, uh, in Nirvana. Yeah, so we will go to live with the Buddha, something like that. It usually in Cambodian tradition also. It is like in our Northern Buddhism that we call Mahayana, they say it's about the final salvation or final goals of Buddhism to live with Amitabha Buddha. That the Buddha was dwelt in Sukhavati or the Buddha Ksetra, the kingdom of the Buddha, like we, like we watch as a young, watch uh, the, the uh, the stories of Tangje, Wukong. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we will see the, the exact thing that the Mahayana Buddhist goal have mentioned in the Buddha Ksetra or Sukhavati, that all the practitioner will enlighten and become a Buddha to live in Buddha Ksetra, the province or the kingdom of the Buddha. But in Theravada Buddhism, we actually have written about that word that we say um, sukati. Sukati means su means very good or happy state. We call happy state or happy destination. Yeah. And kati kati means going. So sukati going in the right way. But we translate in our Cambodian language that that it like supreme state that we are going to. But there is no space, no state, no realm of Nirvana. Nirvana is just perceived by individually, by ourselves. We don't find Nirvana in another existence. In another existence, there is no Nirvana. Nirvana bring, you bring Nirvana into yourself that mentioned by Venerable uh, Sidhan Wati, if you def despise the defilement, like lobha, greed, dosa, hatred, and moha, delusion, all of this bad, act, bad or all of this defilement that you despise from your, your mind, then you, you pursue the, the cease, the peaceful, that is Nibbana that you bring to yourself. That we can say Kelesa Nibbana. Mm. That get rid of all these filaments. And what is very distinguishes Buddhism from other religions? 
all other religions have their final goal in Brahma world or in heaven or in some other states. But Buddhism just only bring peace to our world. That's why when we ask, when somebody asks us, why, why you do good thing practicing uh, Buddhism? What you gain? To practice Buddhism, we gain nothing. Practice Buddhism, we lost. We, 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 we don't gain anything, but we lost. What we lost? We lost anger, we lost hatred, we lost envy, we lost rigor, we lost hostility, we lost defilement. To, to cease, to obtrude all the defilement is the goals of Buddhist practice. If you don't get rid of a, a little bit bad thing, you did not experience Buddhism yet. So to be a, a good Buddhist, you have to train your cell, body, and mind to be far from bad things. That we mentioned the essence of Buddha's teaching, that, that is how to practice. When you practice, you, you, you are far from defilement, you are close to goodness, and you pursue Nibbana. In other religions, they have like, like uh, the knowledge, the knowledge of like those who understand, who see the previous bird or see uh, the being go from, from existent to existent, but they don't find the Nibbana, Aswakayanyana, the knowledge of sis of defilement. This is very distinguished from other religion. And the final teaching of the Buddha in Mahaparinibbana Sutra, the Buddha mentions about the monk. There are four monks or four recluses in Buddhism that never existed in other religions. So, Sanami, Anagami, and Arahan. Those four people or four recluses never exist in other religion because other religion never have the four noble truths. If there is no, uh, there are no four noble truths in any religions, there are, there is no, uh, there are no uh, these four kinds of uh, beings also. That's why to be a Buddhist, you have to practice, you have to be far from bad thing. I just gave a short example. No, now uh, the time is all, uh, the time is more now. Uh, sorry, the time is up now. But I just give short example for myself. When when I was a novice, just maybe a month after my ordination, um, the we the temple boys, they are the same age of me. Of me he or uh, he or he always disturbed me when I'm when we have lunch or breakfast in in front of many people, you know. In many of people, they, he disturbed me very much. From day from day to day to day, I was be very patient. I never say anything, but many times occurred to me, then I yell to him. I yell to him, and then many people look at me because many people at that time. Only that time when I did my lunch and I went back to uh, my, my, my hut, this small hut that we live in the village, uh, I think that I am a Buddhist monk right now. If I still angry with those such person that not a monk, because to be a monk, we observe 10 precepts, we practice the Buddha's teaching, we learn the Buddha's teaching, we still have anger, we still have mistake. And he just only the 
temple boys, he learned nothing. So he did many things bad because of ignorance. So if I, if I hate him, if I angry with him, I also the worst very bad than him. So that's why I commit myself not to angry, not to have, not to catch a mistake of all those who are uh, such a lay people. So that is just only thing that Buddhism teach us. To be Buddhist, we have to control our mind. Even though we cannot control momently, but we start, we start little by little. We will reach our goal as nirvana or salvation that is free from all suffering. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Pante, uh, most venerable speaker. Uh, I would like to clarify a little bit, uh, just to correct my mistake that I say uh, hatelessness is the, the, is the way to deadlessness. Actually, it's the hatefulness. Sorry about that. Hatefulness yeah. is the way to deadlessness or mindfulness is the way to nirvana. Uh, so anyway, what you all have um, delivered was uh, a lot of insight uh, and a lot of clear uh, understanding. Uh, I think it would be enough for us to, you know, really understand about the idea of the teachings of the Buddha. But if we just keep talking around, you know, uh, Buddhism, uh, if we keep talking around uh, the idea of Buddhism, I think uh, we're going to spend more hours uh, on to that. Uh, but uh, I think the best way is to uh, continue our show, uh, maybe an introduction to Buddhism day two uh, to the next week so that uh, our people can clarify some of the misconceptions, uh, you know, around the term Buddhism and the Buddha's teaching as we may have um, uh, nowadays. So, uh, anyway, just to uh, include the sex center day because of the time is over uh, right now. So uh, before ending our show, I would like to uh, share merit to all living beings in the whole universe by the power of our uh, Dhamma talk uh, today. May all be liberated, be free from suffering and may all live happily and uh, peacefully right now. Uh, also would like to thank you to all venerable speaker, venerable uh, Sinwati, venerable Sam Yinti, uh, venerable uh, uh, Antimani Mangsang, the president of the Cambodian Buddhist Monk Society in USA, venerable Satha Mani uh, Sompanya, and venerable Thia, who is the uh, operator for uh, the Buddha Sasana program today. And we will come back uh, next week with a different topic in relation with the introduction to Buddhism. So I Piko Mani Bhutao Sokdevi, live from Seattle, Washington State, would like to uh, say thanks to all the viewers and we wish you all the best. Sukita uh, on to and goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.